Yo, 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 you listening people, you're listening to Spin and Polish Presents. Wait, Ron, I have to say my greeting first. Okay, go. Yo. Yo, 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 listening people, you're listening to Spin and Polish Presents. Wiggity wah, I'm here, you're here. Baba yay, baba yay, I'm Ryan, that's Bartek. I'm DJ and we're, BK. We're here, we're here to do Spin and Polish Presents unappreciated masterpiece, dog. Present isles. Present isles, dog. Now, why are we speaking like this? Don't know. What's up? I feel like we're doing a Will Smith movie today. Is it Wild Wild West? Don't know. But we're going to find out. We're doing our show, Unappreciated Masterpieces, the show in which we present the audio commentaries to do you. <laughs> <laughs> in a feature like the audio commentary track in which we talk about a movie that we feel is unappreciated home dog and we say no yo this movie's great yeah and we say let's talk about this movie in a positive manner because not enough people talk about these movies whatever movie we're covering in a positive manner like i said we're cur- we might be cur- i feel like because my body has woken up today feeling like I gotta speak this yo 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 talk that we're doing a Will Smith movie could be the case, couldn't be the case who knows, you've read the title I don't know until Bartek tells me it in Polish because we're spitting Polish dog cause Polish people are the Will Smith of Europe if that homie at the end there homie <laughs> <laughs> so Bartek or, or should I say bar dog well I did say I'm DJ BK DJ BK! I feel like we're becoming VJs, video jokers. <laughs> right, you've been, you've been talking the most this episode so the, far, the, so the you it's, gun, it's all on you. The, 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 you. You chip in a little. Like, the video only, jokers you're saying. The video jokers from Uganda, where mm. it's like, movie, movie, movie! <laughs> <laughs> Dinosaur! So, Bartek, what's the movie we're covering? On this episode... Dog. <laughs> On this episode of Unappreciated Master Pizzles, we are doing the classic film Ripki's Feyarne. What was it called? Homie, it's Ripki Sfeyarne. Ripki. 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 R-Y-B-K-I. No, it's spelled R-Y-A-N, Ryan. That's how you spell my name. Ripki. No, Ryan. Ripki Sveyarne. Rip. No, it's Slowinski. Actually, it's Ryan Slowinski. <laughs> alternate universe, Ryan Slowinski. <laughs> it's it's my mirror universe version, in which he's evil, <laughs> and he's spawned by the fact that his youngest sister, his older sister, called him a name one time. We'll get into that, or we won't. Well, Ryan's gotten into it before the recording session. <sighs> I we're watched like, Star Trek. We're Dis- half an hour late. I to watched start. Star Trek Discovery the other <laughs> night, and it pissed me off. People, yo, 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 dog. So, what movie does that translate into? Are we doing Wild Wild West with Will, Big Willie Smith? <laughs> I'm uh, I'm not one hundred percent sure on what the word "fiarne" means. Oh, because uh, when I'm not sure about a word, I put it into Google Translate first and foremost. Yeah. But Google Translate has this really weird thing where <laughs> it tends to translate words. It prioritizes movie title interpretations over actual translations. Mm. Go figure. And apparently, "fiarne" is the title for Goodfellas in Poland. No, that makes sense. And that makes sense. so that makes the title Fish of Goodfellas or something like no, that. No, that actually makes sense if we're doing Wild Wild West, but it doesn't <laughs> make sense if we're doing what? Ripki's Feyarne is not Fish of Goodfellas or Fish in Goodfellas, uh, homies, listening homies, sorry. Uh, it is Shark Tale. Shark Tale from 2004? Yes, Oscar nominated animated feature Shark Tale. Shark Tale with Will Smith Fish. Yes, Oscar the Shark Slayer. Exactly. But Oscar nominated Oscar Slayer. It makes sense that it's homie. Good Fish in Goodfellas because it's literally Fish in Goodfellas. Because Goodfellas is all Robert De Niro and telling gangster Martin Scorsese. Ha 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 ha. Greatest film ever made. But Bartek, we needed to be joined by the Goodfellas of Fish himself. The good homie. The guys, 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 guys. We got Martin Lawrence here from Bad Boys, the Will Smith classic. He's here. He's here looking at me going, I'm not Martin Lawrence, I'm Will Brooks. Local god and entity? Hi, God of blaspheme. Hey guys, faux shizzle, it's me, Will, (laughs) being the guest on the (laughs) SPIT to the Polish. 
How are you doing today, listening I people? I hear that. I hear that. I hear that. <laughs> that dog. You guys at home have to have a copy of Shark Tale, the 2004 film. With you, the DreamWorks classic, Oscar nominated. We did DreamWorks last episode. We're doing DreamWorks this episode. Well, this Will one's DreamWorks. Different. This one's different because it's Oscar nominated. Oh, wait a second. It's the exact same. Wait a moment. Do they always get Oscar nominated? Did B movie get Oscar nominated? Well, I guess we have to find out if we ever cover that movie. I guess yeah, we never know. Did Jerry Seinfeld get an Oscar? He I never accepted know. it, and he was like, "What's the deal with me getting an Oscar?" And George is sitting there in the audience, being like, "Meh," and then Elaine's standing over. By the by the stage, and she's just like, Jerry, get off the stage! And Kramer comes on the no, stage, well, and he jitters on like, Elaine, whoa! Elaine would be upset be because seat, she was in a Pixar film. She was in a Pixar movie. <laughs> so, guys, at home, you have to have your copy of the movie ready, because I'm going to do a countdown from three. I'm going to go down to play. You're going to press play at the same time. We're going to be lined up as we speak about the movie. So wait, get wait, ready. wait. Are you going to say zero or just one? No, point? no, one to play. Oh. So get ready in three, two, one... Lay dog. So Booyah, Shrek Tale has started. Shrek Tale, my favorite yeah. movie that is an ants. So William Brooks I. the third. What is He's the third, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that's you, actually true. You're actually, Am I? Yeah, uh, isn't yeah. your grandfather and father both William? Yeah, no, no, they're, no they're both sorry. Robert. I'm sorry, but your middle name is Rob. Name's if you Robert. count the middle name, I guess you're Billy Bob the Third. So William Brooks yeah. the Fifteenth. Could you tell Fifth me Dizzle. your history with Shark Tale the movie? Well, I I think I have a very I'd say a typical history. Oh. With Shark Tale, I would say this is the standard history of Shark Tale. Go on. Um, I'd watched it when I was a kid. I actually can't remember if I saw it in theaters or if I saw it later. Interesting. And I remember thinking it's okay, but it wasn't necessarily one of my favorite films. And what was your favorite um... film of two thousand and four? It's okay to say Big Fat Liar. Yeah, I guess I guess I have to. I guess I now that you mentioned that I have to say Big Fat Liar. Then yeah, I, when you said of two thousand four, you mean at the time or of that year? Both. Because Both. of that year, it was two thousand two. That was Big Fat Liar. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Isn't it that your favorite film every year? <laughs> other yeah. than other than Shark Tale, of course. Other than Shark Tale. So, Will, you might have seen it at the cinema. Not too sure, but you definitely saw it. I definitely saw it as a kid, and I hadn't thought about it. Since? Really? Since? Did you own it on uh, DVD or yeah, even yeah, better, I, I VHS? Because the DVD. trailer for this movie, oh, I don't know if Bartek <laughs> noticed this, there's a trailer for this movie on, on YouTube video. that is just the VHS transfer of the trailer. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, 2004 but, VHS. Bartek, 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 uh, B-Dog, B-Dog, what's your history with this movie? Well, here's my final thoughts. Um, I what are you, Jordan Peterson? <laughs> Jerry Springer. That, oh, that was Jerry Springer. Because you were chanting my name. So. Sorry, sorry. I didn't They're recognize pretty much the that same guy. flawless impersonation. <laughs> I actually thought you were being Martin Scorsese for a second from this movie. Which is why you said Jordan Peterson. Well, because he also sounded like Jordan Peterson. Did, did I? I don't know. Yeah. I was pretty confident that was Morgan Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't his Orson Welles impression? It was my Tracy Grimshaw. We'll get into that later. Um, I saw this in cinemas, and I think I saw it the same... Day that I saw whichever Garfield movie came out that year as well. The first Garfield movie. Yeah. I think I saw them both in the same day at when Wa- when Waverly Gardens Shopping Centre had a cinema. Whatever happened to that cinema? It closed down for some reason. That really sucked because it was always the place with the cheapest tickets at the time. Was that why it shut You down? didn't support it enough, guys. I don't guys, know. Guys, you fucked guys, up. Guys, we just went past Jessica Shrimpson, who's been in movies. Yeah, and we Muscle done. Crow. And Muscle Crow. So, Bartek, you saw it in the cinema. Yeah. How did you feel when you were uh, 11? I, yeah, I was 11. I I remember I really enjoyed it. This was a film that I watched in my childhood, you know, maybe a few times. I had the DVD. Um, And, you know, it's something I always thought, like, oh, yeah, that was fun. I liked that movie. But it was only in recent years that I've heard a lot of people giving it a lot of flack. And, And also, as a little extra thing, there was one time... I think a, a few years after the film came out, um, I, I, maybe it was like Christmas or something, but like my dad was asking my brother and I, like, okay, do you, would you, you guys want like a present or something? And we both asked for something. I can't remember what I asked for, and my brother, because he was very young mm. and didn't really have an idea of that, like, you know, 
uh, movie licensed video games uh, weren't the greatest things in the world. He asked, uh, I mean, how dare you? The Lilo and Stitch game was the bomb. Well, and this is what I'm leading to. He asked for the Shark Tale game, but because he I, he wasn't very good at playing games at the time, he didn't play it much. Has he gotten better? Oh, he's gotten a lot better, yeah. Oscar, um, Oscar, congratulations. Oscar the Game Slayer. It's, it's all <laughs> tying together. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Is that the reason why he wanted this game? Because the main character is his name? Well, it's spelt differently, but I'm well, not yeah, sure. Wait, but it's the closest you get a get in a mainstream game. Well, it's not like you're going to get a, 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 a movie-based game called Oscar spelt the Polish way. Mm. I doubt that, unless you're in Poland. But what I'm leading to is, so I was the one that ended up playing the Shark Tale game, and you know what? I actually remember it being pretty good. There was a lot of licensed songs in it. The There was a lot of gameplay. Was Will Smith songs in it? Because there wasn't any in this movie, I don't think. No, but they actually did get You Can't Touch This for this game. Uh, yeah, yeah. well, that is in this movie. So. Well, Will Smith sings it on his own. but Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. they actually got the real song in it. It's a cover. It was a decent game. I haven't played it in forever, so I don't know if it holds you up. You should have it. replayed it for this episode so that you could have given us a quick game review. Because if we want to be a real podcast, we got to be one of those pop culture podcasts well, that is... cover it all. So, guys, get ready for the top ten countdown list of what's happened in pop culture this you know, week. I had... Number ten. You know, I had an yeah. excuse for when we did Prince of Persia Sands of Time, but I don't have an excuse now. You are weak. I will say this, weak though. I will say bone. this, though. When I initially had my PS2, it didn't come with a memory card. And it was only when really? I, yeah, and it was only when I got far into the Shark Tale game that I said I can't turn off my PS2 until I get a memory card. And did you keep it on? Yes, I did until I got the memory card. And how, how did... long did that take? I can't imagine it took that long. Four years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, didn't the memory cards from PS1s work for PS2s? No, you could transfer PS1 save data to a PS2 memory card, but you couldn't like use it straight up. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'll weird. take your word for That's it. That's inconvenient. Because I can never remember ever getting new memory cards for the PS2. I, I just remember plugging my old ones in. Your history, Rai Dizzle. Oh, shiz, dog. This is... Don't swear. Oh, okay. Soz. I shouldn't have said dog. Well, you said So, first. here's the thing, people. To get real with you, I saw this movie. This is one of the few movies that we've done on the show that I saw at the cinema. But not just the cinema. The only time I've ever been to a drive-in cinema Ooh, was the time I saw dog. this movie. In Sydney, drive-in cinema, it was a double feature, and guess what? This movie was so good, m- myself, my mum and dad, and the people that we saw it with, my family, friends, I contacted them all before this episode. None of us can remember what the other movie we saw was. We could only remember Shark Tale. It probably wasn't Garfield. I only saw that in in high school when a teacher had a DVD copy of it and was like, kids, you're in year nine. You like Garfield, right? Could it have been Big Fat Liar? No. But, no. But I saw this in Drive-In Cinema. I was, yeah, 11. And the thing I remember the most about it was the fact that I was the only one watching it. Um, right. what happened was we saw it with the family friends who had a kid that was a lot younger than me and we saw it because they're like, oh, we should let them see a movie that they want to see. And the other movie could be a mixture for everyone else. Uh, evidently it didn't stick as well, that other movie. Um, I want to say that other movie was Schindler's List. No, uh, <laughs> a re-release of Schindler's List. What happened was, was my parents, Bull? my parents, my parents, friends, and even the young kid... We're standing outside the car, getting food, and behind us, on a big screen behind us, was Alien vs. Predator, and they were watching it without sound. Okay. They were more fascinated. They're like, man, I wish we could have seen this, but we have like a six-year-old kid here. And that movie sucks in its own right, but like, I sat there, I was the only one who sat there and intently watched Shark Tale, and I remember... Vividly thinking to myself, hmm, what did I just watch while watching it? Like, I'm thinking about the previous scene as a kid. I'm like, what is this? But also being entranced by the by the beautiful animation from DreamWorks. Because the thing about DreamWorks is they have a very unique animation style, which I call the ugly duckling animation style, 
which is they're the ugly duckling of animation where you look at the animation from from ants to shrek to b movie to this to over the hedge to boss baby less so boss baby we'll get into boss baby because we covered that last week but they have ugly animation like their design madagascar their animations are hideous looking like the character designs and even the quality of animation like they look like not fully rendered but they're the ugly duckling in the fact that they blossom into oscar nominated and culturally relevant movies Mm. don't you agree like shrek is visually gross to look at as a movie and that's fitting for what shrek Shrek is. is and that's a part of the charm of dreamworks is they're unconventionally awesome like Look at this movie. Who said to themselves in a Hollywood boardroom, you know who really connects with the kids? Martin Scorsese as a pufferfish. But I congratulate them. In the in the audio commentary, which I listened to on the DVD... You have the DVD? Yeah, I said I watched it on the DVD. Yeah, I'm just, refer- I'm just got the cementing edition. for the audience that, that the B-Dog has it on the D-Dog. Yeah, the DVD. Um, the DV- DVD, <clears throat> you remember what it stands for? Uh, digital video disc? Yep. Yes. Um, it. yeah, they talked about in the audio commentary, the three directors. Um, yep. There's a man, a woman, and a Frenchman. No, I thought you were going to say a fish. <laughs> <laughs> One of them may have been a fish. Yep, the woman. Um, they talked about how initially Sykes, the Martin Scorsese character, was initially a smaller role, but they expanded it. And in fact, in this scene... It was originally a killer whale from a branch family threatening Don Lino to say that, like, oh, you know, I'm going to reveal the secrets of your son's actually a pussy or something, and then he sicks the um, the the piranhas on him. But in the final film, they just made the piranhas like a scare tactic thing for Sykes. So Fair enough. It, it, the audio commentary really cemented to me that they had a lot of ideas, they made a lot of changes, and also they talked a lot about how... Animation had evolved a lot since uh, since they did Shrek. Yeah, man. how when they did Shrek, they didn't have the ability to like uh, have skin stretch, yeah, squash and stretch true. is what they called. And in this film, they were able to do that there to do that a lot more. But did they mention why they cast Martin Scorsese as a pufferfish? Well, no, because that's just common sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up. Yeah, legendary film director Martin Scorsese is a puffer fish. In no, no, I'm not questioning that. I've accepted that completely. That's just common sense. Yeah. So wait, in this deleted scene, this or killer possible whale... Scene, possible scene. This possible original scene. scene yeah. This original idea. The, the killer whale was related to the shark? Like no, was he was branch, his boss. A branch family, you he said? Was, he was the boss. A branch of the family? I can't remember family? if it was a branch family, but it was definitely an associated family of So a shark, sort. a fish, and a mammal well, related? I, mean, I don't know, but we see killer whales in this film. Now, now we've got to talk... I'm just questioning the bio... I shouldn't be questioning no, the biochemistry there. No, don't question it. Don't question it. Here's the thing we've got to talk about. The, you listen to the audio commentary, I read the trivia, there's even mm-hmm. some great videos online that talk about the history of this movie... What an impact or lack of impact it might have made culturally. Mm. The thing we got to talk about is the fact that Bart's ex- Australian DVD copy yes, had an Australian, Australian version of a, this movie. A single Australian localized aspect. It's like there's a movie, I can't remember what it is. I want to say it's Independence Day Resurgence or one of these movies where the reporter on the TV is Carl Stefanovic. Mm. The Today TV show host that is so legendary that he's a meme in his own right. But your version had an Australian media personality. Please explain who that personality is and who they are in this movie and all that kind of stuff. So for anyone not listening, one of the free TV channels in Australia is called Channel 9. Appropriately enough, it is the ninth channel that you click the button of. Mm-hmm. And um, Sometimes. It, has, following. it has a show. It, it isn't Nine News, but it's called A Current Affair. Which basically like investigates current. Well, well when you say and... that, when you say that, it's that show that is people that don't have jobs are fucking scum. Here's a reporter who actually turned out to be a well-known pedophile investigates the case. Yeah. Like that's an actual thing. <laughs> it's it's basically like yeah, sort of a biased news investigation ish show. And the main host of it is this lady called Tracy Grimshaw. Yeah, and she was the voice 
in the Australian DVD release, I don't remember the cinema one, of Katie Current, the recurring news lady of this movie. Whose American version is, I guess, the equivalent Katie Couric. Yes. Uh, Who the pun of the character's name is based on. Yeah, if they made Tracy Grimshaw's one, like, Tracy something Shaw, like, that would actually work, because she's literally got a watery thing in her name. You know what I mean by this? I'm yeah. surprised of all the puns they didn't come up with one. Nah, because they're too... Because then they'd have to have someone who's a well-known actor say her name differently. Like, they'd have to get Will Smith to re-record and be like, Oh, you're right. Yo, that been a lot of money. Tracy... Tracy Freeshaw or whatever. <laughs> like, yo, 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 it's me, Will Smithfish. But that's so interesting. And then apparently the UK has their version and Italy has their version yeah, of these you, people. Yeah. Because I, I, according to the wiki, I was basically watching this film, and like it's really cool that they got an Australian to do it. And then the credits, it was like when they were showing the characters and their actors, it was like Tracy Grimshaw. I'm like, oh, that was Tracy Grimshaw. Now, how neat that DreamWorks hired an Australian media personality for this internationally released film. But then when I read the trivia, mm. and it had that really sassy thing about how Katie Couric voiced the character, and the character's name was based off of her, and then in brackets, it's like you don't say. Yeah, yeah, I remember that, actually. <laughs> Here's the thing that I need to really emphasize for the listening people. Katie Couric, I don't know anything about her. Nori. But she has a name that I am familiar with. Uh, however, Tracy Grimshaw, I am familiar with. And the thing that makes it extra confusing is Tracy Grimshaw is the blandest media personality on, ch- on TV here. Like, Tracy Grimshaw is a woman who will be like, and now we're going to go over to the doll bludger section. Like, these people, she's really bland, and she's aged like milk. Like, I'm sure there's... I'm sure there's a person out there that stayed incredibly young, and she's that oil painting that they keep in the attic, but somehow they've got a TV show around her. Like, you know what I mean? Like, she's the Dory, mm. like the portrait Dorian of Gray. Dorian Gray. So basically what we're saying is we should have had Peter Fisher. Yeah, we should have. There you go. We you should have. You should have written sharks. We should have had someone today. else interesting, like uh, uh, Bert Newton, <laughs> <laughs> like Australian media personality, well-known comedian Bert Newton, otherwise known otherwise known as Moonface. That was actually his nickname, and he still is. But like, uh, so this movie's dense. There's so much trivia, Will, that when Bartek uh-huh. was surprised, I didn't know Tracy Grimshaw was in the version. I just forgot because there's so much dense, dense trivia. The biggest one that I remember was the fact that there's a character in this movie that is uh, one of the gangster sharks. Ah, uh, the Peter Falk one. P- Peter Falk, who's Columbo, and he sounds exactly like Columbo here. I'm surprised they didn't make him say one more thing. Uh, he plays Don Feinberg, and the reason for that, Will, is because... They needed to give him a different name to an Italian name because they didn't want to be done for like racism against oh, yeah, there's Italians. An an- there's an like anti Italian American uh, discrimination league in America yeah. that were like boycotting this film and even still boycotted it after they made the change. So Feinberg wasn't enough to. No, not no, no. no. This and not, was or... it not only enough? I guess somehow in this universe they're Jew Italian sharks because. There's Feinberg, who's clearly played by Peter Falk, who clearly doesn't sound Jewish, or uh, he's more Italian-sounding, because he is. Mm. Uh, But not only that, but Robert De Niro, as a thick Italian male shark in this movie, says casually, oy vey. Also, Jack Black is Jewish, and he plays Lenny, the son, and he's putting on a voice in this that sounds extra Jewish than normal Jack Black that doesn't sound actually that Jewish. But I guess the implications are these are Jewish gangster Italian sharks who, look, I'm not as familiar with the Italian Jewish culture, but is there one? May I get maybe. I would assume so. Would you? I mean, I would be shocked. I mean, there's barely any Jew, Jewish, Polish people, and that's because Nazis eradicated them. Let's not forget it. Italy was also a part of the fascist regimes. Hmm. I'm surprised. Maybe I'm not saying there isn't. I'm just I saying, is there enough the for there to can't be remember... a crime family of Jew Italian? I sharks? can't remember the the nuances, but in the film Life is Beautiful, the Italians were sent to like concentration camps as well, right? 
I think so, man. Yeah, so... W- would they you mean w- that Oscar-winning or nominated movie? Yeah. Yeah, Life is Beautiful, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember the specifics of why they were sent there. I've never seen yeah. that movie, actually. Oh, okay. Good I've mind. been meaning to, but then I've just been like, eh. You know how there's always those movies? Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. The Oscar darlings that you're like, yeah, I haven't gotten around to 12 Years a Slave yet, but I will, maybe, one day, who knows? Hmm. Um, well, it's, I, I mean... I, it's got I, Paul Giamatti. I know there was a... There what? Was a... Life is Beautiful? Is he the Nazi <laughs> officer? <laughs> is he the Nazi officer? He's like, Meh, get in there! No, the other racist film. There was oh, a... Oh, 12 Years a Slave. Oh, 12 Years a Slave. <laughs> there was a... He's an auctioneer. There was a Jewish community in Rome in the time of the Empire. I mean, I guess they stuck around. Maybe stars, <laughs> maybe became <laughs> great white sharks, started a mob. <laughs> That's another part. They're great white sharks. You know, do the, they're white, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yes, obviously. They're counter shaded. What I'm saying is, where in the ocean is this set? Is this like near. The Titanic, right? Is this near Australia? Tracy Grimshaw's in it, so maybe. I don't know. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Do great, white, it's not great fun. white sharks get around. Do they? They oh. get around. I know, but there's other fish that you feel like more Australian looking. I mean, this oh, this film also came out like a year away from Finding, Finding Nemo, Nemo, which Everyone's definitely favorite. was set near Sydney. Yeah. Um, there's a lot going on in this film. Little do we know that this here is a setup to yeah. a payoff. Yeah. That the shrimps are going to revolt against um, Robert De Niro later by making him wear a mustache of them. And also you learned that... It was that, very inconvenient. And you also mm. learned that his, his story was actually true. Yes, that is yeah. the case. The, the, audio com- the directors were very proud of that. Yes, yes. I imagine they would have been. Did they high-five each other in the audio commentary? Did you hear them make slap noises? Like, yeah. Well, no, because I think one of them might have been a fish. So You can still to... high-five a fish. You're high-thin. Yeah, you high fit. But he was obviously, uh, or she was obviously in water, so you can't really yeah, high yeah. five as much. You can high five underwater. Yeah, but like, think about it. You don't get the impact. Dude, of, like this, this we could do it literally right now. tripped over itself, and they even questioned it in this movie. Like, how do you trip over in, in water? And no, Lenny I, later I, tripped I, as well. I actually think it was mm. quite clear because the tail sort of spun up and sort of hit it in the chest. Yeah, hit him in the yeah, face. Will clearly the missed face, it. Even I can't even. I'm, so, I'm clarifying. Ryan, why weren't you paying attention to a scene that I'm clearly misremembering? Well, funny you mention that because uh, Oscar was, you know, dancing when that happened and he only noticed the, the, the seahorse had tripped when yeah. he saw. Man. Now, here's the thing I never thought we would have on our show, Unappreciated Masterpieces, the show you're listening to now. I never thought Will Smith would be a recurring actor that we would cover. This is like, what, like the 15th Will Smith movie? We've had a movie a with winter, Will Smith. We've had a Winter's Tale. We've had, we've had something. Then we had Collateral Beauty. Then we have this. I'm forgetting what the something was, but there was something. <laughs> something. <laughs> just, just Will Smith is in movies. Oh, and we also had him in Jersey Girl for a bit. Yeah. There's a, there's like a fifth film, but I'm forgetting. But yeah, this is probably the fifth one. Yeah, and it's just like, wow, Will Smith, Will Smith needed a lot in movies. I mean, he around. was a very big actor in, you know, 90s to 2000s and even and sort now? of this decade, yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, we covered two movies that came out in the last five years with him in them. Mm. Collateral Beauty and everyone's favorite, Winter's Tale. Yeah, Will Smith... When are you guys doing After Earth? Well, maybe one day if you're good. If I behave myself. If you behave yourself. You've got you've to build... You've got to be a good will to get... You don't want to do the film Concussion, the one where he plays an African guy and he, and he talks like this. And he's like, tell the truth. Tell, yeah, I was about to ask, what's the line that you like? Tell the he's truth. trying to tell protect truth. people from brain injuries in the football. <laughs> tell the truth. We just met Angelina Jolie fish. Oh, look, The Hook. Get it? It's it's The Ring movie. Yes. She's reading on the paper, The Hook. Ah, uh, get it? Before you eat, they eat. I know that, Ryan, because I listen to the... Co- I mean, I, I, know, I know films. Oh, yeah. So Angelina Jolie, Will Smith, Renee Zellweger, Martin Scorsese, Robert De Niro, Jack Black, Ziggy Marley, all big stars in 2004. It's a star-studded cast. It is so huge that you ask yourself, how do DreamWorks get these people? Why did you guys not say Incriminating Tracy photos. S- who, sorry? Why didn't you say Tracy Grimshaw? Well, she's a local talent. 
Fair enough. She's never acted again. <laughs> You'd think they'd fit in a current affair pun there, you know? Yeah, yeah, like... like Lends when, itself well. Like, every, she's like, hello every... there, I'm Tracy Freeshaw, and I'm here to stop doll bludgers. And then she looks at those little kid fish graffitiing, and then she's like, get out of here! This is a current affair. Yeah. No, that's actually, that's actually pretty good, man. You, you, yeah, you, you, I told you, Bartek, you should have written this film. What the fuck were you doing yeah. in 2004? He was, the, he was waiting for the audio commentary. To Peter Hitchener, get in contact with me. <laughs> We've got one degree of separation with Sam Peterson. So, this movie has a lot of elements going on. Will Smith is an arrogant, self-centered, egotistical, maniacal, right, maniac right. of Let's a talk fish. about Oscar the Shark Slayer. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. May I start a conversational thread? Yes. Sure. So wait, Bart, wait, wait. Y- oh, no, you go Th- first. Thread or Fred? Thread. Uh, okay, I thought he said, may I start a conversational thread? And I'm like, <laughs> may you uh, indeed? I'm very as long as I it doesn't become a conversational George. I, uh, I thought he was going to be like, now, guys, I'm going to speak in that high Fred voice. Ah! No, no, I don't think do I'll Fred be doing Flintstone that. Voice for the rest of the episode. Yabba dabba doo, I was played by John Goodman one time. You so, like Bartek brought this up before. <laughs> yabba dabba A lot of people don't look back on this film too fondly, and I noticed one recurring theme in people's uh, dismissal of Shark Tale was they don't like Oscar as a protagonist. They think he's a cunt. So I want, Ryan Bartek, what's <laughs> your opinion on Oscar as a... Protagonist. Oh, he's a cunt. <laughs> I mean, uh, he's a right cunt, but like, he is a thing. Does that negatively impact? He's a remember? cunt with a heart of gold. He's a cunt with a heart of gold at the end of the day. Or a heart of a pink pearl. Oh, wait, nice. that was the chest. Was? And then he falls on his face? Yeah, man. Maybe I was paying attention. <laughs> you see, his eyes were closed and he was dancing. And he did miss But it then too. he sees it on the replay in slow motions and. Isn't it weird that the seahorse is the best animated fish thing in this whole movie? Well, well it's got a lot of, like, you know, bendy limbs, so it makes and sense. And teeth? The, the, the audio commentary really emphasised the jellyfish, actually. Because, I bet they did. Because, you know... They were the, really proud that it looked like Rastafarians. They were like, we nailed that. I actually That's, do like the they, sort of globby, nebulous Rastafarian jellyfish cap yeah. hats. They also, you know, they have the long tentacles, and they were also, uh, in 2004, I believe, subsurface scattering, which is a thing where you look at how light travels through physical objects, so in their case, their heads, um, was a was a new technology, and they were able to implement that into these characters. So the, they mentioned that they had a lot, well, they're all the directors, but they mentioned that the animators had a lot of fun having them do things, which is why they become, like, sort of prominent recurring characters throughout the film. Well, Bartek, There's not that much is actually record. really good to hear, because I was watching this movie going, why are these jellyfish becoming mainstay characters? But now I know. Now I, I mean, know. look at the way the light reflects through their transparent heads. Look at the way It's impressive. It's called one of them subsurface has, scattering. Look at, look at how one of them has a goatee and the other one has, like, a jawline beard. Just, Just absorb that. They're, they, allowed, they, they're allowed to grow their facial tentacles. How they wish. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> now, Bartek, do you think Oscar is a cunt? I mean, the answer is yes, but like, <laughs> expand upon it. Well, he's objectively a cunt, but do you think it negatively impacts I the don't, film? Is my question. I don't think he's a bad person. Is it because he's played by your favorite Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Will Smith? Do you think there's a personal bias there? If he was played by James Avery, I'd love him more. <laughs> yeah, you would. He's your favourite? He was your favourite in French I think Prince? so. I think so. But what about Carlton? Uh, Alfonso something? Alfonso I... Caran, Oscar-winning actor. <laughs> I can't remember his last name. Oscar-winning director of Roma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alfonso Caran. I've still, still got a see one. It's okay. It's on Netflix. You can watch it anytime. Just apparently, just apparently, like Shark Tale. apparently, like apparently so Spielberg doesn't want Oscar-nominated things for for Netflix no more, and that's coming from the guy who brought us Ready Player One. Oh yeah, doesn't he want films to be in cinemas for like four weeks now or something? Yeah, his whole thing is 
he's got competition because all the other directors like Martin Scorsese are going to Netflix and he doesn't want to because he owns his own production company called Amblin. I heard someone like retorting with that saying that uh, Ed Wood was a bomb film and it was only in cinemas for three weeks but it won two Oscars and you know that would mean that films like that wouldn't get an Oscar. Yeah, exactly. Because of bad circumstances. So, Bartek. Yes. Will Smith is a fish is the pitch of this movie. Do you think that if it wasn't Will Smith, this character would be far more unlikable or far more likable? Well, definitely, as you stated, I, I do. I am a Will Smith fan. I was definitely into him in the early 2000s, and to an extent still am now, but he's, he's just not as prominent. Um, what do you mean? He was in Suicide Squad. He was, but he's not like... What are we, some kind of Suicide Squad? He's the famous line. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I mean, he's not like, you know, top of the food chain, as it were, as much these days, isn't he? What are you talking about? He's he got... was fairly top of the food chain in that uh, film, along with Margot. No, he's he's coming back. He's doing Genie. Everyone's favourite character from Aladdin. He's... True, but whereas... Hollywood Os- thinks he's still top. True, but whereas Oscar the Shark Slayer... Dear God, those preview shots of Will Smith as the Genie. Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> you mean... You mean... Can't wait to cover it in a future episode shots? Yeah. Oh, dear. I mean, you've, you've kind of illustrated my point. Like, back when Shark Tale was coming out, it was, you know, the next Shrek. It was also a, you know, a new 3D animated film... In a world that was, you know, still getting new 3D animated films that were really good. You know, this wasn't so much Uncanny Valley back then. Um, but there is an Uncanny Valley effect going on because it looks like Will Smith. Oh, for sure, for sure. But but back then, I feel like it was more accepted. People were more like, oh, yeah, the next DreamWorks film, we like Shrek. Even the DVD box says from the creators of Shrek and in even in the audio commentary they were talking about, like, you know, we just came off of Shrek and we got new things to do in this film and... Yeah, man. Yeah, I just think this film had a lot more optimism going for it, whereas, as as Will has demonstrated here, not the Smith, the Brooks, um, people are not looking forward to the new Aladdin because of what they've seen so far of Will Smith. Yeah, man. Now, yeah. now that raises a great question, Will, that I want you to answer, but it's like you as well, okay, myself. Okay. Do we like DreamWorks movies? Have we always liked DreamWorks movies? Which like, what's our feel on DreamWorks in general? Have we liked them? Do we like them now? What's the go? Because I'm going to say it, I've never liked DreamWorks movies. I never cared for the Shrek movies growing up. Oh. Everyone loves them. They would always be played in my primary school and high school. Yeah, so and I'd always be like... We studied Shrek 1 in year 7 English. I and think. I was always like, yep, Shrek, I get it. Mm-hmm, cool. Yep, he has a swamp. He wants it back. Yep. Farquaad, I get it. Huh? Like I, I've never really liked DreamWorks movies. What about you? Um, I've I personally liked most of the animated films I saw in the cinemas growing up. So DreamWorks was just for me like, oh yes, that one. They made these films I liked. I haven't nece- I haven't necessarily seen a lot of their later ones. Like those, you know, Over the Hedge, Flushed Away. Do they make Meg? I think they made Mega I I haven't seen a lot of them past a certain point. But was Flushed Away DreamWorks? I'm not sure. I thought that was Ardman, who do Chicken Run. And... I I thought I'm I think the sure. Flushed Away was Ardman, and then like, but DreamWorks were involved in some capacity. Okay. Like maybe they distributed it or something. A, a lot of them blend together. For the longest time, I didn't even know who made Ice Age. But uh, basically, yeah, I I always thought like, oh yeah, DreamWorks. I've liked some of their stuff, and it was only a little later in life that I started re- recognizing a lot of their more cliche things, like you know celebrity actors, the the DreamWorks face on the posters. Songs. Pop, songs, pop culture references. Um, yeah, it's, it's only when I grew up and become, became a bit more analytical about my film viewing that I started seeing, like, okay, this is what Pixar does, this is what uh, DreamWorks does, Blue Skies is kind of like a third wheel mm. in the whole thing. But then you rewatch a movie like this, knowing all the analytical stuff, and then it all goes away, right? Like, you, you go, analytically, I know that this movie is probably trash. Like, you go, all oh, the tropes and the pop culture and the songs and the, you know, all this. But then when you watch it, you're like, kumbaya, umbaya. And definitely, I walked in being like, yeah, I, I now know all this stuff, and I know why, uh, I sort of know why people are hating on it looking back. But at the end of the film, I have to say, it still worked for me, and I was fine pseudo-watching it again for the audio commentary, and yeah. I, I thought it was great. 
Will? Um, I, I I like some DreamWorks film. I films. I feel they're a bit up and down, maybe. Yeah. And what I are haven't seen like a lot of the more recent ones. Well, I liked Shrek one and two. And Not when Shrek I was a, the fourth. I film? haven't seen Forever the fourth uh, one. Uh, the fourth. For me, the third one I wasn't into, but the fourth one. I didn't no, I didn't mind. like the third one. I liked the fourth one a little bit because it had um. What was the bad guy? Uh, Rump- Rumpelstiltskin, Rump- and he the, he was great. <laughs> He's like, I'm angry. Go get me my angry wig. Um, and look, I've never seen Mega Mind, but some people swear by that movie. Some people say, I, Oh, it's really good. I, can't I remember haven't if seen that it is though. Actually a DreamWorks so movie. That, that or might not. not be. I could have sworn I read a trivia point saying that. Um, I think they were criticizing DreamWorks, being like, Oh, The Incredibles was many years before Mega Mind. They were too late or something. Mega Mind's great. Mega Mind's great. And yeah. I like. Yeah, Wait, are you complimenting Will Ferrell? Seen... No, no. Uh, yeah, sometimes <laughs> I like Will Ferrell. He's a good voice. He's a good voice actor. I know, but on this show, it's <laughs> also because he's got a script in that movie. Yeah, that's and true. I haven't seen Jonah any Hill's of the, the bad guy in it. I haven't I seen that. any of the sequels, but I liked How to Train Your Dragon. That yeah. was pretty good. See, I'm that asshole in the room. That I saw, that I movie. saw How to Train Your Dragon when I was at university, and I was like, it's boring. It's fine. It does a lot of DreamWorks tropes that I don't like, mm. which is. Shrek did this. I fucking hate this bit in Shrek where, oh, there's a misunderstanding and they separate. You know that? Poor bit? communication. Yeah. You know, the low point, you know, in scripts, mm. it's like, you got to have the low point. Yeah. DreamWorks does that in every movie, except for, no, they're doing this one. They're doing this one. I won't exclude it in this one. Like, you know, she gets upset at him. There's a low point. Everyone separates off and like, oh, life is horrible. But what is one that you really hate? Because I really hate Ants. I've always hated that movie, Ants. It's been far too long I since s- I've, I've seen I've definitely Ants seen it once or twice. On but I can't the movie remember. that's like, hey, can we have Woody Allen in a kid's movie about ants? I think the only ants. thing I remember is uh, a bunch of ants forming a giant ball. That's it. I remember the bit where they fight the termites, and the termites are all monstrous. Mm-hmm. That sticks out to me. Not much else does. But what's the movie of DreamWorks that you don't like? Because there's reasons why people Should do be. and don't like. Like DreamWorks usually gives you uh, strong feelings in their works. Like you never walk away from one being like, "Yeah, it was all right. Like I enjoyed it. Fair enough." Like usually you're like, "Oh, that one was just awful. Oh, that one was great." Like Shrek the Third is terrible. I remember that feeling really exhausting. Yeah. I remember walking away from it being like, yeah, not into it, but I wouldn't, I don't think I was venomously hating it or anything, but I'd probably go with Shrek the Third because it's the only one I can think of. What? We haven't talked about B-Movie, though. We all love- I have not seen B-Movie. You haven't I, lived. I. I have not seen guys, the living meme movie. You guys B-movie. haven't lived. You guys haven't lived. I've probably seen a really short edited version of it online. You guys online, but... haven't lived. So the Ugly Duckling thing doesn't apply to Boss Baby because Boss Baby looks like it's an Illumination movie. Mm, well, they, yeah. it's they, all own sweet Dreamwork- and they own DreamWorks now, so there you go. It's Do, all but not coming then. together, not at the time. No. Wait, what did you just say? Illumination owns DreamWorks? Not yeah, the other no, way around. Apparently now. Not they the other way around. Are they that big? Uh, minions. Yeah, Illumination mm. prints money. Minions. All, all I minions. really... My, uh, one of our guests, Mark, went to Japan recently, and he said they, they have buses that are just minion buses. Wow. <laughs> like, like, they actually own a form of public transport over there. Isn't that great? Yeah, That's that really scary. All, all I really know about... Illumi- oh, my, 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 my. <laughs> all I really know about Illumination is uh, I Hate Everything's video on <laughs> Sing, where he talks a bit about that. And, and Minions? Well, I... more so the Sing one, because he actually talks about the company and how they purposely make very cheap films so that their profits could be even bigger and stuff They're like the that. Blumhouse of animation. I, mm. that, I, I don't think, think I've yeah, ever seen good. an Illumination film. Not a Despicable Me? No, I Not I a Minions? Seen a... I've, I've, I've only seen no. the first two Despicable Me's. Uh, me too. Yeah. And I didn't want to see them either time. I actually like... I, I like the first one. The second one, I didn't mind. I hated both of them equally, but the only thing I liked was Gru as a character, and the rest of it, I was like, please leave me alone. Which is why Minions doesn't appeal to me, because Gru was... Yeah, fine. My thing with Minions is I didn't care. Like, when I saw them in the movies, I they didn't offend me. They didn't evoke anything, but then just the fucking advertising and merchandise. Same for me, I, yeah. I think that would be pretty much everyone's relationship with them. Because well, no, I didn't see the movie, but you 
if you were just assaulted by this just <laughs> they were fucking everywhere so it was just an <laughs> onslaught. I've never even seen any of these movies, but they were just everywhere. Just to give everyone an idea, when Will said you, he was indicating to Ryan. I'm like, oh, Ryan, what did you do to Will? I meant Ryan. I meant you, Bartek. I meant me. I meant all the listening people. He meant the royal you. Just, he it meant was the an royal onslaught. You. It was an onslaught. Here, here's the thing, though. DreamWorks aren't... Um, they aren't... Uh, you know, you can't say that they're not guilty of the same crime too. Like Shrek was fucking marketed everywhere. Like yeah, Shrek was you could not everywhere. get away as a child from people quoting Donkey. You couldn't get away. Arguably, you still can't. You still can't. especially on the internet. Oh yeah, memes, sure, but like that was different then. Like kids and people were genuinely quoting it, not for the memes, but for the for the jokiness of it. Like and also the songs. Shrek, that- I'm looking down. Like you could not I'm get away. Waffles. Oh, he was everywhere. Making waffles, and like you couldn't get away. And DreamWorks is guilty of that as much and as even- Illumination. Like Illumination really took a DreamWorks handbook, like and just copied it. It's like just to go back to Eddie Murphy, uh, because he's donkey. In the movie Coming to America, he gets a job at McDonald's. Yeah. And they're, like, trying to say that they're not ripping off McDonald's, but he literally has the McDonald's, like, employee manager handbook in his in his office to replicate what they do. That's Illumination with DreamWorks. Like, Illuminations is trying to be DreamWorks. And the thing is, they're succeeding well, now they don't because... Have to. No, the thing is, they're succeeding because DreamWorks hasn't had a major big success since the How to Train Your Dragon movies. Like, they're the big ones. Like, they aren't pumping out, like... I've heard a lot of good things about them. I liked the first one. Uh, I haven't seen the others, so I can't comment on them. They look gorgeous. They look gorgeous, which is unusual. Uh, But, like, you know, I mean, like, this period of time, they had all the Shrek movies. They had this movie. They had a bunch of movies that were just, like, cream of the crop, cash cow. Like, they get all these big celebrities. By the time you get around to freaking... Uh, How to Train Your Dragon, your, your, your lead actor is is just some guy. Yeah, had Gerard Butler in it. Yeah, Gerard Butler's the biggest name in it. And Craig Ferguson. Uh, or, or, like, Boss Baby. The biggest names they could get is Tobey Maguire and Alec Baldwin. Don't forget Jimmy Kimmel, right? Uh, and Jimmy Kimmel. Well, in this movie, they have Will Smith. Oh, Steve Buscemi. Yeah, but Steve Buscemi's not, like... Steve Buscemi's a character actor. It's like saying, oh, and they got Steven Root. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like this... If you had to say it, like, this had Will Smith, the big man himself. It had Angelina Jolie, the hottest woman on earth at the time in terms of... Jack Black. Yeah. Jack Black. You know, he was up and coming. He, he would have... He would have... This would have come out this, just before School of Rock. Possibly, yeah. That was 2005. I'm pretty oh, sure. I thought it was earlier, but yeah, it w- it's definitely pretty in the sure. first half of the decade. I might be yeah. wrong, but I thought it was around 2005. It's really around this time. I think we've had this discussion. I think you were right, it's, so we'll just say 2005. It, it's, everyone's huge in this. Well, say Boss Baby, Tobey Maguire hasn't been huge since since Spider-Man back in 2001. Like, yeah, well, so, well, the trilogy went to like 2007, I think. Yeah, but you know, I mean, that's when he was the hottest, was the first Spider-Man, the first two Spider-Man movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, last thing I'm ever seeing him in was Great Gatsby, and that was like Same. five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this movie has Robert De Niro's in this, and this would have been at the height of when he was doing the Meet the Fockers movies, which is you can look at those and turn your nose up, but these were huge hits. Yeah, they made a lot of money. Uh, so DreamWorks has gone down in quality since this movie, and you know you kind of have to go bummer, man. And I think it's because they just have stopped doing like this kind of stuff. Like, these weird movies, they just stopped doing them. Like, Boss Baby was weird, but it wasn't like Will Smith is a fish weird, you know what I mean? Like, let's animate as realistically as possible Will Smith as a fish, to the point where he has big, sticky out ears. Yeah, <laughs> to segue into a slightly different point, what do you guys think of the whole... This is another big contentious issue I saw. Is this another conversation with Fred? Yeah, this is another conversation with George. It's Fred! <laughs> oh, no. Um, what do you think of the whole let's just put celebrities' faces on fish aesthetic? What well, do you guys think well, of it? I'm sure the flipper community, that's the fish community of furries, I guess. <laughs> I mean, Bartek, we've done this in Chicken Little, but you're, you're a bit of a furry expert. 
do the f people who want to fuck fish have a specific name? I think I asked this in the Chicken Little episode. That's a good question. What would we... Scalies? <laughs> well, Scalies kind of refers to reptiles. So oh, so... I don't know. Oh, Maybe? Jesus. The scaly's already fucking taken. <laughs> it's already... That IP's taken. Gillies? Maybe. That's for people who are attracted to Gillard. Sorry. Tullies? Tullies? Oh, what I'm about... Curious. Um, Blobbers? <laughs> Because sharks have that really rough, sandpapery skin. Do you need a separate term if you're some weirdo who wants to fuck sharks? And it's different or... when it's dolphins because those are mammals. And, you know, we're... Mm, this is a tricky one. This is a tricky question, guys. Uh, if you're a fish, furry person out there, let you're, us... If you're Troy McClure. <laughs> if you're Troy McClure, let us know. <laughs> um, um, and no copping out and saying mermaids. But what I'm saying is... um. I personally don't mind, but there's a weird sexual element to the female fish. And I'm not going to skip out. This is something I've seen people mention negatively. The racial stuff. Like, like Will Smith is clearly a black fish. And he even says, white fish don't know how to do this thing. Right, yeah, and it's yeah. kind of weird that in a kid's animated movie... That the animated version of a black person has big jigaboo lips and has those smarmy, like, you know, I mean, he has these racial caricatures in his animation because he is a black guy. Yeah. In real life. You know what I mean by this? I just, I think we have to just address that's a thing that yeah. people well, don't like yeah. about this movie. B because me, they've got the whole angle of when they talk about the white fish, they're talking to great white sharks. But we're not. Oh, I but the it to but, Syke too. Yes, he Sykes the white fish he talked about. But Doesn't Syke, he have. Sykes isn't actually. No, really no, Sykes white says it movie. to the Don. When he's trying to make him do it, because yes, yes, he's yes, learnt because... it by then. Yes, but doesn't Sykes also get called a white fish at some point? Yeah, that's what Will's saying. Like he gets called it first. Yeah, but he's not and a great. Comes but back. You made yeah. it sound like great white sharks, white, sh white. Yeah, but like yeah, Sykes but, but... is a puffer fish, so. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Unless, and he's I'll... also brown. <laughs> yeah, I guess that kind of ruins my point. But when it's said to the great white sharks, yeah, there's an obvious thing of like, yeah. okay, there's a white thing there. But well, people, people but when you look at sharks. but when you look at Oscar, he he's not. I mean, he's got some black on him, I guess. You but know, he's not you a know, black fish. You know he's what he is, some, though. He's got some white on him. You know, as well. But you know what he is. Uh, I think I read in the trivia he was some sort of like scrubber. Oh fish. no, no, I wasn't uh, even talking about that. No, no, I wasn't even talking yeah. about the fish. Why he could be considered a black fish is because he's a he, he's a colorful fish. Yeah, he's a, he's a he's, fish of color. He's Blue a fish of color. Streak cleaner wrasse. Yeah, that's it. Yum. Can you eat those? Wait, 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 hold up. He's what, a cleaner. Seen... Wait, 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 hold up. He's a cleaner. Connect the car wash? If, if, if you were to get a blowjob from a mermaid, would that count as whatever the fish equivalent of, of furry is? Well, I don't know. I feel like technically it would. That's always a big thing about mermaids is, is it bestiality? Well, that's why I said it was a cop-out earlier, so yeah. It, it's like that, uh, I think it's like... I want to say, because it's so lowbrow, I want to say it's a Family Guy gag, in which it's It's like not my finest well, moment. One of a, the... fish, a fish top and a bottom of a guy. It's like, well, how, do you, how, else do you, how else do you think we would fuck? It's like, oh, yeah. yeah I, I, think, I think I was, that's what I was going to say. There's like a recurring sophomoric argument of like, would you rather fuck, you know, top half fish, bottom half human, or other way around? And yeah. What about if it was like two face but like fish? So instead of the bird half, it's the fish half. <laughs> so that way you can get the best of both. <laughs> Ryan, that's going into different fetish territory. I, I, I dare think, say I think you've created something new I and dare, very unholy there. I dare Ryan. say that's going to TF territory. <laughs> hey, it's me, Fish Face. That would be his name. Harvey Carp, you know? I'm Fish Face. <laughs> Will's, Will's not happy. You know what I love about this? <laughs> we haven't talked about the big, big elephant in the room is that Will wore his Jaws t-shirt into the episode in which we cover a film that Finally. actually uses the Jaws theme. Well, Will told me about it on the way here. He was waiting for you to bring it up. Okay, I'm soz then. I should have used <laughs> yeah, my Columbo... Can't you read my mind? One more thing! <laughs> I'm using my Columbo moment in which at the end of the episode I tell you how I put it all together. Will is wearing his Jaws t-shirt, the Jaws poster, yum yum. You know, I actually I actually get a lot of compliments on this shirt. I I'm do. a little surprised. I, I get compliments on people the shirt. See, people see me down, Frank says, ah, oh, Jaws, I know that movie, you're alright. 
guy. That reminds me of there's an I Hate Everything video in which he talks about the Rick and Morty community. Mm. And he's like, whenever he wears a Rick and Morty shirt, like one time he was just walking down the street with headphones in and the guy went, Rick and Morty! Flub a dub dub dub! And he was like, what? Oh, dear. <laughs> he was like, what? Took his headphones out and he went, and he said it again, Rick and Morty! Flub a dub dub dub! And he's just like, uh, okay, thanks. <laughs> and then, like, we're like, I think I remember that. Yeah. I spent more time on my life with that interaction than I needed to. Then another time where he wore, like, a rock t shirt, the guy behind the music shop counter just went, Oh yeah, that's a good band, and then and he just went, yeah, thanks. I have more pleasant memories of that experience <laughs> than the flub dub dub dub. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I do love that in this universe, Xbox exists. Just yeah, I guess it does. There's an Xbox controllers there. I didn't grow up with Xbox, so I didn't know. But now I didn't uh... either. But I remember their controllers because they looked hideous and annoying. Oh, the the original Xbox were green, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I think I remember. They're playing that. Xbox. Yeah. So hashtag confirmed Xbox. Did they make the game version of this? I know that PS2 there was one for and GameCube, GameCube at least. had them. Xbox, pick up your game. They literally gave you advertisement in this movie. I guess they must have, but I don't know. Now, back to the big big fish in the room. Martin Scorsese is in this, and this is the uh, the last thing Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro, I'm pretty sure, worked on together before their newest movie coming out later this year, The Irishman, that brought Joe Pesci out of retirement, to the point in which Joe Pesci's iconic line from Goodfellas is quoted in this movie at the end, where he's like, what am I, some kind of clown to you? Um, yeah, I think the the directors in the commentary were talking about how, like, you know, it's kind of weird that we made a lot of these references to Godfather films to and all that. the R-rated movies that came out 25 to 30 years before this movie came out that kids wouldn't under- have any understanding of. Roger Ebert focused on it a bit more than they did. Did but... Roger love it? Did, yeah. Was he like, I like this film because Will Smith came to my house one day and he gave me a box of cookies and he said, you are the real Slim Shady. He gave... <laughs> <laughs> from his classic show classic song The Real Sun Shady yeah. um, he gave it 2 out of 4 it's because Roger Ebert's a white guy and he re the truth he gave it 2 out of 4 so he yeah. half liked it I think so yeah I read like the first half of his review was his review like uh, a shark a shark uh, so he's like Shark Tale a 2004 animated movie from the production company known as DreamWorks the production company that brought you Shrek I think the first Ants. I think the first two paragraphs were him just monologuing about how when I started as a film critic this film was this many years old and then this film was only this many years away or this many years old so it's kind of weird that this kids film is trying to reference these films now there's so much going on in this movie it's so dense it's so layered and the thing is, we mentioned that he's an uh, unlikable protagonist, and that's not unusual, especially for Will Smith. I mean, Will Smith plays unlikable protagonists, but they're kind of likable because he is naturally charming. Like, mm. Men in Black, he's he's a piece of shit in Men in Black when you first, like, you know, he's he's a cop, on he's a cop, but he's kind of a bit of a dick. You know, he hurts, you know, but he's a little bit less of a dick than Tommy Lee Jones. Hmm. So you go, oh, okay. But then Wild Wild West, he's like a dick. And in Independence Day, he's a bit of a dick. Like, like. But I think it's in this movie, it's a bit different because it's for children. And he's so arrogantly a dick. Like, he bets on the seahorse and he the, loses. The betting the family pearl on the seahorse race. That seems to be a big breaking point for a lot of people I see and it's called the inciting incident yeah and he justifies it by altering a memory of his and genuinely believing it well wouldn't you do that if you wanted to genuinely believe your own life Oscar's a dumbass so he makes these kinds of huge fuck ups yeah it's like what do you want from a movie you want him to be Captain America of the animated fish community like do you want him to be prim and proper and perfect with no Captain distinguishing Southley. do you want him to be henry cavill's superman like i don't know what you want like do you want him to just be flawless to the point of boring or do you want him to be flawed and he learns a lesson like Which characters happens. do it's like toy story right Woody's an asshole in Toy Story. He tries to get Buzz killed actively so many times in the plot, but I never hear people go like, Woody's mean and de- 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 because you grew up with it and you loved it. But if you look at it from an objective standpoint, Woody's the antagonist of that movie, <laughs> but he's our protagonist. And that's the same with, with Oscar here. He uses lies, manipulations, low tactics to, uh, you know get what he wants, as did Woody in, in Toy Story, but they both learn a lesson. They both go through an arc. They both learn from their mistakes of the thematic issues that are relevant in whatever the film is. And that is great. 
to make a we'll point... We'll put his hand up here to listen. To make a point that I would like to make... Okay, is this another I notice friend? when... Is this another I suppose friend? this is another conversational Jorge. Um, when uh, gone for another when I see people uh, <laughs> online talking about films that they didn't like, I notice a recurring thing is that they come out, oh, none of the characters were likeable, or I fucking hated the protagonist. And people say that, say that it's, oh, I couldn't like the protagonist at all because of his actions. I don't actually think it's the actions the character takes in the film that puts mm. people off as a general rule. Yeah. I think it's more personality. I think you know, people, I see people online say, oh, I fucking couldn't stand Oscar because he was such a jackass. He did this, 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 and this. But I think it's actually more the the sort of the arrogance, the full of itself that puts yeah. people so off. Yeah, so it's Will Smith's fault. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think what people say, oh, I didn't like the protagonist because of the actions, I think it's generally more... Uh, how it's presented. Yeah, it's how it's executed and presented. Because I think with because those Shrek's people, a dick. Yeah, you'd find they'd find you'd be like, oh, I couldn't like this movie because the protagonist was a dick. But then you'd find they love plenty of movies where the protagonist like, was Shrek's, even a bigger dick. Shrek's an asshole, but he gets away with it because he has a funny accent. And plus, he also has like the sympathetic thing of he's got an annoying <laughs> person next to him for the whole movie, and he has to suffer. That's related to what I was going to say. He just wants to be left alone, but he's being forced to, you know, but interact Oscar with But Oscar has a relatable thing, that he wants to be rich and famous. We've all wanted that at some point. Mm -hmm. We've sure. all wanted to not live on the bottom and be a nobody. I know, but... He, he wants to be a somebody. He it's like to... the waterfront. Well, yeah, he's but... upset because he doesn't have enough five-star <laughs> reviews on iTunes for his podcast. So yeah, exactly. You, you want to be yeah, exactly. on his side. Yeah, exactly. Like, if we don't get any more five-star reviews on our podcast, I'm going to have to go out there and say that I'm a slayer of something. <laughs> and then you're going to be like, whoa, 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 he slayed this podcast? Whoa, we better give him a five-star. An unappreciated masterpiece slayer. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, we've been doing that for years. I guess we have to slay another podcast. Yeah, but it's kind of weird when there are two people doing it. So. Watch out, Shake It Not Nerd. We're going to slay you. Watch <laughs> out, Picture This. Or Dirty Harry Podcast. Or Sam Peterson's Confession of the Idiots. Watch out, we're going to slay you. And once we memorize Miscellaneous's name... Miscellaneous? Getting you're going to get slayed, dog. Rock Capital. Watch out, films, Stefan. Uh... <laughs> Watch out, San Dimas School of Film. You're gonna get slayed. Who haven't we threatened yet that we've had on the show? Let's, uh, Dirty Harry. I think I threatened you. Said, you you said Dirty Harry. Podcast. We're gonna threaten you twice. Oh, Watch um, out. no, I just said miscellaneous. Watch out. Oh, damn fancy dinosaurs. Dem fancy dinosaurs. You're gonna get owned, and then we're gonna get all the reviews. And we're gonna reveal the secret behind your name, which you haven't done yet, apparently. Guess what, bro? We're going to do our own podcast about Will Smith Fish Show. Welcome to the Will Smith Fish Show. To be show. fair, Ryan, we started... It's starting right now. We started this episode, you know, using all that cool lingo, but Dem Fancy Dinosaurs literally has a Dem in their name, so... Yeah, right. Maybe we're the pretenders. And we That's should right. be like Shake and Not Nerd and just have a pun. Oh, yeah. Well, we... Uh, you just we, figured it out? No, we just have a double meaning in our name. Yeah, exactly. That's stupid. We should... You know, sometimes I wake up late at night and I think, you know what our podcast really needs? It really needs Will Smith opening it up by being like, Yo, dog, I'm YouTube's big rewind now. <laughs> he talks about Fortnite. Will Smith. Will Smith is YouTuber's big star. He has a YouTube channel where he goes skydiving and he's like, Oh, that was crazy. Everyone's favorite. But here's the thing, here's the thing. Will Smith was at, you know, pretty, pretty much at, you know, the height of Will Smith. Them, I think he might have even been doing Ali around this time, so he might have even got Oscar nominated around this time. I think Roger Ebert commented that he had done Ali at some point in this review, so I yeah. want to say it was early 2000s. Like 2001? I'll take your word for it, buddy. I mean, 2001 mm -hmm. was a rough time... <laughs> You know, yeah, Zoolander. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was a rough. <laughs> that was the big. Concern. It was a rough time because nine eleven interrupted my Dragon Ball Z viewing on Cheese TV in the morning, and it was rough for everyone involved. You mentioned that a lot, Ryan. You really not gonna let this go? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't find out what happened, and I never will. I never will. Thanks. He missed out on his filler, and he Thanks. is pissed. <laughs> Thanks, Osama. Um, you know, it's all your fault. What happened to Vegeta? Is he okay? 
Uh, now I can't watch Dragon Ball Z. I don't know who Broly is. I'm completely lost. I don't want to catch up to the 25 years worth of material. It's like starting from The Simpsons at the very beginning and watching them in chronological order to the very end. It's like painstaking. Why would you go all the way to the end? <laughs> because I have to be up to date. That's the whole point. It's like when my fiance was like, I've never watched Seinfeld. And then I'm like, oh, okay. And then we watched the first two seasons of Seinfeld and I gave up because it's so weird watching Seinfeld. Like... Because for us, it was always on TV, so you just watch it whenever it's on, and you're like, oh yeah, it's this episode, great. Like, But to sit down and actually sit there and watch it, I'm like, it's great, but like, I'm, I've seen this before. But my mate Oliver has watched Seinfeld in its entirety so many times yeah. that he recognizes individual pieces of canned laughter that recur. <laughs> <laughs> and when he started recognizing all these different bits of canned laughter, he almost had a psychotic breakdown. Was it like they use recurring canned laughter or something? Recurring individual pieces of canned laughter right. he started to recognize. Well, here's the thing that you need to know. This movie has Renee Zellweger who was in Chicago, and Empire she was in Empire Records. But not only that, she went on to be in B Movie, which had Joe Seinfeld in it. Oh, it's all. And in connected. that movie, she played a woman who wanted to fuck a bee. In this movie, Sorry, she plays a, a fish who to wants to fuck another fish. Here's my question: Is Renee Zellweger a furry? Oh dear. God, what are furries who want to have sex with insects Who did called? Renee Zellweger want to have sex with in Chicago? Good question, good question. She was married to John C. Riley in that movie, but she didn't mm. like having sex with him. She liked having sex with, I guess, no one? I think she was attracted to Richard Gere, I... who likes gerbils up his ass. So she is a furry. Hashtag confirmed. So she either wants to fuck a animal or someone who fucks animals? No, 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 no. She likes to either fuck animals or fuck people with animals inside of them. So the people she wants to fuck <laughs> are related to animals in some way and they can speak English. Yeah, exactly. So so what other movies has she been in? So Empire Records, she played the slut in that movie, so we know she's promiscuous. Um, she... Characters and actors are the exact same thing. So no, no, no. That. What I'm saying is, she she has a type she likes to play that reflects who she is in real life. Like she's letting her kink show. You know, in in the... she was in Bridget Jones, and she was up for having Hugh Grant be near her. This is this is fiction, but in the Forrest what Gump a... book, she went to space with a ch with a monkey of some sort. Forrest Gump book, Renee Zellweger. Yes. I've told you this before. Wait, is Renee Zellweger in the Forest We've had this Gump conversation, yes. What are, you, what are you talking about? We've had this conversation before. <laughs> like four years ago. No. <laughs> when we did Empire Records. I can't remember Wait, when we I, had I wasn't here for this conversation, <laughs> Bartek. Can no, I get no. some context? Wait, hold on, hold on. Uh, you, wait, wait, hold on. Is Renee Zellweger, Renee Zellweger, the actress, a character in the book? Yes. Not... That you're thinking Renee Zellweger played a character in the movie that no. happened to be in the book. No, she is... was not in the movie. She was not in the movie. She was... I mean... She was herself. Renee Zellweger was in the book Forrest Gump. As Renee Zellweger. <laughs> I mean, it's weird to say she wasn't acting in a book. She was in the book as a character. So, and she was an actress. Called Renee Zellweger. Yes, so it was her. Who went to space? Yeah, with, with Forrest Gump and a monkey named Sue, I think. How? Why? When? Where? What? Wait, wait, a Who? monkey or when? a chimpanzee? This, I, need I can't, to know it's this. some sort of simian. Well, it's obviously a chimp, because that's what they send to space. It's not like they send a gorilla up there with they them. They send monkeys sometimes. <laughs> so it, it didn't end well. Uh, so, Renee Zellweger... I know this because... Wait, wait, that has a chimp! Of course, it even adds up even more! That's what I was bringing yeah, up course, for. Yeah, of course, of course, of yeah. course! So now so, you know it's true. So so what else does she like that are animal relations? She's in Bridget Jones, in which she has to toss up between Colin Firth and Hugh Grant, right? That's the two men she has to toss up between. But one what of What kind of animal is Hugh Grant? Oh, Hugh Grant's clearly like some kind of stuttering chipmunk. Colin Firth was in love with Rupert Everett's character who had a dog. And he was originally gonna be the voice of Paddington, the bear. Ah. 
but Ooh. he did the voice acting, but they replaced him with Ben Whishaw because he didn't. They didn't feel he was right. So she wants to fuck Colin Firth in that movie, who was the voice of a bear. It all adds up. I think with case closed, Renee Zellweger is a, into bestiality. She's a furry. Her she, characters. She, 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 no, her. She keeps doing roles. <laughs> that de- she's showing her kink. It's she's showing so her kink. Real, it's like when you see life... Quentin Tarant- You see when you see Quentin Tarantino show women's feet all the time. You're like, oh, he likes feet. It. That's what I'm saying. Is she likes animals? So or Renee personified Zell- animals. So Renee Zellweger, the person, the characters she plays, and the fictional representation of her in the. Well, the fictional movie. representation is actually a bio. <laughs> art, re- art reflects life. When like, her the and, whole thing when is her that... and Tom Hanks went to space. <laughs> no, no, Forrest Gump met Tom Hanks in the sequel book. Was he a... What? What are you I've talking about? I've talked this before. Who are you? Man, what I've, got, I've got to read the Forrest Gump What are you on books? about? I love the Forrest Gump I've got to read these. Who are... are how many books. are you? How many are there? Two. There's are you Forrest sure there's Gump not... and Gump and Co. Are you sure there's not a third one in which he makes the Forrest Gump movie and he is Robert Zemeckis? Like, <laughs> I like I don't know what you're on about. Like, you're what? insane. I have, I've told Bartek, are you sure there isn't a third one where you personally... Bartek appear as a character. <laughs> I wish there was a third reading, one. Reading the and book. Forrest Gump comes on reading your podcast. Reading the book so that you could tell us about it. Forrest Gump's running away from ISIS, but he runs into our recording But room. guys, Missy Elliott was just on screen as a fish. Just thought I got to point that out. Yeah, she sings. Oh, she appears this early in the film? Yeah, it's foreshadowing that she oh, exists in this universe. I missed universe. that. I, yeah, I didn't know. you missed it twice. Audio commentary didn't point it out, being like, hey, look, it's yeah. Missy Elliott. No, no they no, were no, talking no. about uh, the animation for Lola's reaction. How they, apparently the hair was inspired by anime or something. Oh, you're a big fan oh, of that. This, you is, been... this is an anime inspired... This is an anime. This, <laughs> this, this not an is an anime. anime. Inspired movie. This, this is, is anime, because an anime, anime in, is into weird, kinky, weird shit. So, that yep. is true, yeah. Bartek they con- were just saying, like... Bartek the- confirmed it. Like when a character is angry and only their hair is animated. So who in this universe would have the death note? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Who's the lawful evil character? Of the the, well, you're going to have to figure it out, but I'll take it by the end of the episode. And who's the guy <laughs> investigating them? I'll work it out. That'll yeah. Be my so, so who's, what's the character's names in that? Uh, the main character is Light Yagami. But he has a name just called L, right? Or no, no, no. L? The, the, the detective Light. is L. Oh, right. But the main character is Light yeah, Nyagami. Light, light Yagami. Do they call him that the whole time, or do they just call him Light? Light. Hey, Light Nyagami, it's me, <laughs> Afro Samurai. Um, so, you have to figure out who those two characters are in this universe by the end of the, the episode, okay? Mm-hmm. And if you don't, I'll be very, very angry. And as you... almost as angry as I was before we started this episode about Star Trek Discovery ruining Spock as a character because they don't know how to fucking write... Almost as angry as that. And I was containing that anger. Yeah. And if you get angry, I'll get turned on, and we don't want that. <laughs> yeah, and if I dress up as a fish, Renee Zellweger will get turned on. <laughs> you know, like, it's all web of deceit. And, you know, Renee Zellweger, if she hears webs, she gets moist because she thinks animals. And then Forrest Gump author Winston Bl- Bloom, I think his name is. I thought you were going to say Winston Churchill. <laughs> <laughs> Famous Forrest Gump author Winston Churchill. It's Winston Groom. Winston Churchill wrote that. He was like, we'll fight them on the beaches. <laughs> we'll fight them in space with Sue. No, no, he was like, we'll fight them in the beaches. Run, Forrest, run. <laughs> Jenny's a slut, but like, you know, we don't want to mention that. Jenny's a slut, but she doesn't want to fuck animals. You That's know, Renee's when... Song. You've, when heard the, we can sort of. you've heard the song Gump by Weird Al Yankovic, right? Yes. It's weird because that's one of the few songs in which he uses a profanity. Yeah, he says slut, right? Yeah, where Jen- his girlfriend Jenny, Jenny is, is kind, kind of a slut. slut. Went to the, the White, White House, House showed LBJ's, LBJ's butt. butt. Yeah. It is a bit blue for him. It is, it is. Like peop- I love that era where LimeWire and all that stuff existed, where every parody song ever in the universe was attributed to Weird Al Yankovic. Do you remember this? Yeah, really? I do. Yeah, yeah, and Weed House talked about it. It was like, yeah, there would all be all of these terrible, racist, horrible songs, and these parents would listen to them with their kids, like, well, Weed House really changed. Because <laughs> it would be credited to me, because I was the only parody guy out there that had a name that was recognizable, so they would market it under me, because that's why you would listen to it. Poor Weird Al. Yeah, that's really sad, because he is kind of like a family-friendly guy, isn't he? He's a nice Christian boy. Yeah. Yeah. 
I didn't even know he was Christian, but I can believe it. He's also vegetarian or vegan. Wait, he's Christian, not Jewish? He's not Jewish. Yankovic's not Jewish. Okay. He's often yeah, he commented that it's not a pretty fly for a rabbi. Some Jewish. People are You're right. Yeah, some European, people are surprised yeah. because of that. It's like, yeah, no. I never really thought about the rabbi it. Song. It's like, oh, no, he's not Jewish. Jewish. Um, I think it's because he had curly hair and glasses. That too, yeah. And he sung about Jews and pretty fly for a while. <laughs> He's a nice Christian boy. Weird Al Yankovic. Um, but you know who is Jewish? Robert De Niro in this movie, apparently. Oy, Oy vey! vey. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds so alien coming out of his mouth. He sounds so... Oy vey, this is a guy who played freaking young Vito Corleone. Like, you know, like... <laughs> And he had to learn Sicilian for that. Like, oh, his wow, character yeah. speaks entirely in Sicilian, basically, for that movie. But in this, he, he couldn't even muster up saying oy vey without it sounding foreign and weird. And he, where was his Oscar for this movie? Right there. Get it? Because they made Shark Slayer. Yeah. Shark Slayer. <gasps> Renee, Renee Zellweger finds out that Angelina Jolie Fish is evil, but the way Angelina Jolie Fish gets hit on by Columbo. It's all connected. It's all connected. Columbo's a fairy too. Or a, a thin fish gilly guy. Why do you think He Colum- farts at one point. That can be a fetish. It's going after the gold oh. digger fish. Yeah, right. And I don't know enough about Peter Falk's work to deny that he isn't a, he wasn't a furry. Hashtag confirmed. Were, Peter Falk was a furry. Were there any Columbo episodes that raised eyebrows? So he did have a dog. Oh, and what was the dog's oh, name? No. Dog. Uh, oh no! <laughs> he never named his dog. He was too lazy. Oh, uh, you know. Oh boy, it's all adding up. Here's the real question: Who isn't a furry in this movie? If you really want to go there, everyone's a furry on a level. Whoever, you know, it'll this... be some like surprise, like Luca the octopus. And this adds up. Oh my god. DreamWorks are nothing but fur porn, because in Boss Baby, it dressed up as a dog, remember? And I was like, hey, he's a furry. Yeah, he was dressed in a fur suit, at least. Oh he my was... god, the furry gen- agenda's been exposed. Oh my And And the god. very first scene of the film, uh, the parents, uh, in Boss Lisa, Baby? Lisa Kudrow and Jimmy Kimmel, were like gorilla anthropomorphized. Oh my god! What? 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 Wait, sorry. What on earth was the context for that? No, you don't need one. The whole, the main character has like a bunch of imagination sequences. You remember when you were a kid and you imagined your parents as gorillas? I, I did that the other day. <laughs> so there, you, there's your context. Well, right? Will's, why, why Will's, the fuck did I? You're ask the for context. context. Well, you're the context. Will's never grown up. Hashtag confirmed. Um, this is the thing that we've got to talk about, though. Another big element of this movie is the pop culture lingo. Did we have nostalgic flashbacks and or did we not understand some of these references because it has been 15 years? Uh, I don't... None of them really stick in my mind, but I'm sure there were a couple. Umbaye? <laughs> that was a reference to a film, right? You tell me. Was that Ali? I don't know. Maybe. It was, like, that film's, like... I think I read a ha- trivia point saying that that's a reference to something the crowd says in Ali or something. That, that's what I didn't get. Yeah. Maybe it's because I'm not big into Muhammad Ali's legendary boxing career. I haven't seen it either, but yeah. Or just his life or, in general? Mumbai, yeah. but... I think it's a reference to Ali, the film. I don't know. Will, what about you? Did you get nostalgic flashbacks to pop culture references and or did you not understand some because it's 15 years ago? At... The very end of the film, when the shrimp says, you just got served, I maybe understood it on a literal level, but on some spiritual level, I didn't understand it, and I was hurt. Didn't they? Didn't they? I was hurt. Didn't they? You got served movies come out. Did they come out around the same time as this? I don't have I don't have a clue. I know that there's a South Park Yeah, that's, that's, that's the South Park episode. Episode. That's the best use of it. He got served here, oh, here, and critically here. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best use oh, of that, it. Oh, that, yeah, that bit in the hospital with Randy and the doctor pointing out specifically where he got served. <laughs> to get his and his critically off. here. I love that. That's so good. South Park can really get, get it good. Uh, we're about to get oh, the, the, the payoff. The shadowing's the paying payoff. off. Yeah, they make him have a mustache and goatee. And the, the very last shrimp that comes out. Has the no arms and legs and stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bit dangerous bringing your adopted son to this. It's okay. And then in the next shot, it like 
it comes there in, it but is. then it just flies away or yeah. swims away. Well, he's, yeah, he's young. Yeah. He's a young and then he's crippled. That's it. And um, he's moral support. They'll come back to serve you. But Will. did you guys notice that the Robert De Niro shark or the shark has Don Lino. has a mole? Yeah. Because Robert De Niro has a mole on his face. That's very iconic. This is the man who was in Cape Fear, by the way. Another Scorsese movie I forgot to mention that he did. Um, God, they did, like, fucking a ton of movies together. Um, yeah, this movie brought Scorsese and De Niro back together and brought Jack Black into the mix as well. Jack Black is very much a controversial figure. People love him. People hate him. What about you guys? What did you think? What do you think of Jack Black? And what did you think of him in this movie? I've always thought Jack Black was a very charming actor. I've got very charming presence even. I've got nothing wrong with Jables. I think he's fine. Jables. Jables. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm huge on the voice he's doing in this movie. It reminds me of but, Nicolas um, Cage's voice in G Force. Ah, this one you mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a voice you could go to instantly but well, your other I voice that you did earlier Jack on we, we were like is it Morgan Freeman who was I doing again exactly <laughs> I can't even remember <laughs> who you were doing um, I think you were like I'm doing someone can't remember now I thought he was like, oh, oh, is it Joe Peterson uh, or Martin Scorsese? And you're like, oh, no, it's clearly this person. Really it was someone can't. we were talking about. Um, I don't think it was. It was someone tangentially related, <laughs> was it? <laughs> so, in the end, what I'm saying is Jack Black, I have a love and hate relationship with. I remember loving School of Rock. I remember listening to Tenacious D a lot as a kid. I like him when he appears in one-off things like cameo roles in like things, Anchorman, Anchorman mm. and and other things. But I remember very vividly the first time I ever was on an airplane, ever in my life. The only movie that they had that you could watch was Nacho Libre. Okay. And I was like, oh, and you know when you're young, you don't think to yourself, oh, this could be different. I went, oh, it's the guy from School of Rock. It'll be as good as School of Rock. It'll be like School of Rock, but awesome. But he's a wrestler now, and he's yeah. Mexican. Yeah. I hate Nacho Libre. I hate, hate, hate that movie. I saw it in cinemas, and it actually but I made me hate Jack well. Black for a solid decade. Oh well. That's he convenient. was insufferable. I really don't remember much about that film. Well, Ryan, what did you think of um, his other prominent DreamWorks role? What do you think of Kung Fu Panda? I've never seen one. I've only seen the first well, that one. Stops that conversation <laughs> dead right there. I saw the first one a handful it, of months before we started this show. In fact, it, it made me really not want to engage with Jack Black anymore. To the point of which I'm like, nope. Like I've seen him in other things. Like my favorite movie of his is Bernie, which is a great movie if you haven't checked it out. I great performance on his part, based on true events, and it's really well done. And it, he's great in it. There's a bit where. Uh, He's in court, and Matthew McConaughey is the lawyer, and he's like, so, and he's all Southern, Matthew McConaughey, and he's like, so, you saw a play in France called Les Miserables, and and everyone in court starts laughing, and he's like, it's uh, Les Miserables, and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't go to no fancy school where I could speak none of those fancy foreign words, and, he, and, and Jack Black delivers with, like, Great poison means he just goes, it's not that hard to pronounce. <laughs> but, like, Jack Black can be really good sometimes, and I think he just burnt me out with Nacho Libre, and he did a bunch of those movies, like, a bunch of crap. Like, there was a solid period of time where Jack Black was just delivering just packaged shit to your door. It was like, eat it. Fucking eat it. I can't remember them, but, like, that's... And that era introduced that kind of comedy I hated. Like, I hated... Blades of Glory and, 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 you know, Step Brothers and, and Napoleon Dynamite. Like, all these kind of movies kind of spawned from that. Because Nacho Libre had the awkward humor of Napoleon Dynamite, but the improvisation of Step Brothers and the aimlessness. And I just remembered I wanted to die so much. So revisiting this, being like, mm, this is the period of time where I kind of like Jack Black, and I've kind of grown to like him again. I still recognize he's very funny. His YouTube channel's very good. 
Have you seen his YouTube channel? No, I haven't I watched haven't, any no. of his YouTube It's a Let's Play channel in which he never gets around to playing a video game. Okay. And his son's involved, and, and he has a big beard. And it's like him being incompetent on knowing how to use the internet. It's actually quite charming. Right. And funny. Yeah. It's, I would recommend it. It's well, it's charming. Well, there you go. That that was my word for him. He was a, he's a very charming person. He is charming. Like he is charismatic, and I think he's a good actor. If he was given more poignant poignant roles, I feel like. Look he, at his face there. Yeah. Well, Look at his shark away. face. Well, they motion captured it. I'm sure. I remember when he was in uh, King Kong. The Peter Jackson King Kong. Yes, yes, I do. I haven't seen any King he, Kong film. He was the man who's like, he's the seventh wonder of the world, the eighth wonder. Yeah, he's yeah. playing it all in the 1930s. Funny that you mentioned motion capture, Ryan. Um, a lot of people apparently were very upset that this film got the Oscar nomination instead of films like uh, the first SpongeBob movie and mm. Polar Express, which is notable for being the first fully... Uh, motion captured film if I'm Isn't not that mistaken. the movie where Tom Hanks plays like five roles? That he plays the main kid, he plays the conductor, he in, plays Santa Claus. Insert Cloud Atlas joke. He, I don't remember. He I plays know he the, the homeless man that's on top of the train. He plays like five roles. Maybe. I'm, I've uh, only seen I've it once and I remember it gave me nightmares. I remember they, just from the ads, I remember that it sort of looks like puppeteering corpses. <laughs> What I loved is I saw the first Spongebob movie in the cinema and I remember Same. we were so excited. As did I. Because we were like theorizing beforehand when we were driving there what Plankton was going to do because we knew that Plankton did something. Yeah. And and he did. And then I remembered how weird that movie was. Like Patrick's wearing like fishnet stockings, <laughs> his big kinky boots. And I remember my mum, myself and one of my friends from back then saw it. My mum loved it. She really didn't care too much for the show. She was always like hit and miss, hit or miss. But she thought that was great. She was like, that was great. It was wonderful and weird. And like, that's right. That's SpongeBob. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised Sponge. I didn't know that SpongeBob didn't get nominated that's because of this. What else got, got nominated though? There. What other, what? Was this the time when Jimmy Neutron came out? No, because Jimmy Neutron was up with Shrek. Oh. We, we'd have to look Did up what be, the other nominations He lost to Shrek, were. right? Because Shrek won. I think Shrek won, yeah. Um, I like that at the end of this movie, the little fish kids that do graffiti use their graffiti for good. It's a message to the kids mm. out there to find your place in life and be good. The 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 uh, directors in the commentary had a moment where they realized, like, hey, isn't it kind of bad that we're presenting graffiti in a good light? No, it isn't. And they, and they basically negotiated by saying, it's okay, we put it on whales instead of walls too much. But they did put it on walls mainly. I know, but that one was chastised by Didn't Oscar. Didn't they start cleaning it off off the billboard at the start? Yes. Now, it's I love it that in a movie like this, they just awkwardly freeze frame bits of the movie to tell you who the actor and, is. And the best one is Angelina Jolie. Like, that one's funny, but the Angelina Jolie's one is blurry. Just watch. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When they freeze on her, her one is is, is blurry. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's in motion. Uh, and then we're going to come up to uh, Katie Current, and your one's... The, the copy we're watching now is probably not going to be... What like I love is yet. their version looks like Katie Couric, but, like, in the movie, like, in the movie, but... If it's just the same animation... Ah, boo! It's not Cr Tracy Grimshaw. If it was not Tracy Grimshaw version. and they never change it, it's saying that Tracy Grimshaw looks like a babe, <laughs> which she doesn't. And sorry, Tracy, you don't. You look like milk that was right. left out in the sun. You know that Renee Zellweger and uh, Tracy Grimshaw are now going to be coming for you, right? Oh, fuck. Katie Couric will be fine with me. Right? I feel ripped off. The Tracy Australian Grimshaw. Netflix has the American I said, version. I said Renee Zellweger. Oh, uh, Renee Grimshaw. Zellweger found out that I... That I... You know, I'm a, I'm a guy in a fish outfit, and she'll be like, fuck, I want him. <laughs> All right, so the movie has unfortunately come to a close, mm. except for it hasn't, you idiots, because the credits I give more. watching here. The credit gives more of a story. Halfway through the credits, the writers and directors realized, Hans whoopsie. Zimmer doing the music. Oh, yeah, Hans Zimmer did it because he was sick of doing epic movies and wanted yeah. to do a fun animated kids movie. He should have done epic. Yeah, he should have done an epic film. Epic movie? The... No, the film Epic. No, no, Epic Movie, the oh, one oh, that's by yeah. Yeah. Friedberg and Seltzer. <laughs> Which I saw in the cinema. <laughs> you Did you really see that one in the cinema? Yeah, a friend invited me. What friend? Name and shame them. Um, it was the same one that I saw um, Zathura with. 
Morgan. Whatever happened to that friend Morgan? Did they get Freeburg and Saltzen? He moved to another suburb and we just lost contact. You should contact him now and say, hey, hey, oh, they're dead. So yeah, halfway I through mid credit scene in this. which Angelina Jolie Fish wants to fuck Will Smith Fish again because she didn't get any consequences for her actions in the movie. And they're like, hey, you know what's funny? She said crazy. And then Crazy Joe comes up and is like wanting to fuck her. And I guess the movie ends... With the notion that they that they make sweet sweet love, see, I interpreted that as Light Yagami walking in and L catches him. Yeah, look at the cast; not that many voices in like the main cast of people. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, interesting. Uh, Phil Lamar did a voice. Yeah, he did. He Who was, was he again? He was like the oyster Hold guy at the on, beginning. Like he was. I got, I got yeah, he was. Here. He was like the little guy that owned like he was a prawn. He, I'm pretty sure, or something. He owned like a. Like, Phil Lamar as prawn shop owner voice. Okay. Yeah, he was the guy who was inspecting the pearl at the beginning and was like, it's a fake. And the guy was like, I've been working on this for years. Yeah, I remember in, in the commentary they were talking about how a lot of additional voices were just people that, you know, worked behind the scenes. Like the the oyster itself was just one of the guys, and they really enjoyed a lot of their performance, and they thought, we don't need to recast this, this is fine. Exactly. And the Oyster one had a lot of character, I felt. So the movie has unfortunately ended. Let's give our ratings and reviews. I'll go first. Yo, 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 dog, it's me, Rydog in the house. I am a big fan of Will Smith as a fish, as you should. What? Exactly. Renee Good Zellweger is here to stay in a movie in which she wants to fuck an animal. She'll be back again in a few years' time to fuck a Jerry Seinfeld animal. In an adaptation of the Forrest Gump book. And she's in the Forrest Gump book in which her Tom Hanks... Not Tom Hanks, Forrest Gump. Her Forrest, who's played by Tom Hanks in the movie, but not in the book. Because in the second book he meets Tom Hanks. Because in the second book he meets (laughs) Academy Award winning actor Tom Hanks... Hey, look, someone Oscar spelled with a K. Ooh, is it your brother? So then, here's what I say, people. Check the movie out, Shark Tale. A movie that I've often mistakenly called a shark's tale. Shark's tale, with it being, like, the the appendage. And also, a fish tale. Because the movie is so awesome, I think it deserves all the names. Don't forget to subscribe at sharktail.com, www.sharktail.com forward slash EU. And throw in another W there. XY. <laughs> if I had to give this film a rating, which I totes do, home shizzle, I'd have to give this, what is this, some kind of suicide squad out of, are you for real? Uh, who wants to go next with their review? You can go, Bartek. Sure. I'll let. I'll allow it. Thank you. Um, it's allowed. I there there. Oh, you missed another thing. I, I didn't. Oh fuck! I did. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll... you got to watch intently in the end credits because it's giving its own mini story. I'm missing production assistant Miles DeLong. <laughs> I'm never going to be able to live with myself. At the very oh whoa, Kimberly Centurion. That's a fucking great name. HP. That is actually a great name. Oh, sorry. I was supposed to be letting you talk, Bartek. Please continue. Yeah, yeah, thanks for the permission and then the take back. I really enjoyed this film when I first watched it. And then when I came back to watch it again, you know, years and years and years after the first viewing, repeat viewings and playing the video game really well, I was prepared to (laughs) have my... (laughs) Like the humble brag that you had to mention there. Like, guys, I'm a good gamer too. I play that game really well. I um I was prepared to have my uh my my memories shattered. The to be being prepared to just realize that, you know, there were problems with this film. But even walking in with that pessimism, I have to say that it was all very unfounded. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. So I was laughing at Crazy Joe's joke. It was hilarious. Yeah, he was making fun of, like, one of the crew members, right? Oh, yeah. Hmm. This fucking Ryan Slewinski guy. Ha! 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 I'm Crazy Joe! Go he was on. on the phone all the time. Yaka, yaka, yaka! I love this film. I would be on the phone all the time telling people how great it was, but... People just don't answer their phones that much anymore. Yeah, especially well. So I am here on the podcast to let you know, guys, 
Sorry. Listening Homies. Home Doggies. This is a great film, and if I have to give it a rating... What'd you do? I have to give it an L+, plus lit by light. And you're going to have to tell us who, who, who L and Light... Yeah, who, who, had, um, who had the I've already notes. done that. Oh, uh, oh, I missed that too. <laughs> when? I, uh, I said that it was... um. That Light was Lola and Crazy Joe was L. Of course, of course. It all adds up. Will, let's hear from you. All right, time to give my uh, my uh, down with the kids hip and <laughs> with it review. Hello, Steve Buscemi. Um, I would uh, describe this as a movie of threes. There's three directors. Right. Freeze. There was. Uh, I thought you se- said a movie of freeze, and I'm like, Mister Freeze is here in the house. The second set of freeze is, it was nominated for an Os- for an Oscar. The main character's name is Oscar, and Bartek's brother Oscar quite enjoyed Technically it. Technically owns the, the video game. game. Yeah, so no, he definitely owns the video second game. Second set yeah. of freeze, and then for your third set of freeze, it's um three of us. The second underwater film I've done on the podcast. The second <laughs> film with Robert De Niro I've done on the podcast. <laughs> and the second animated film I've done on the podcast. So there's your three sets of free. You're talking about Flipper, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I Robert overall, De Niro as Flipper? No, Rocky that was a That was a great. I know, I know. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so overall, yeah, it's a movie of freeze, you know, free acts, free guys on the podcast talking about it. I'll give Three it, listeners, yeah. I'll give it 2004, <laughs> which is pretty close to 2003. <laughs> you know, there was no new, there was no year zero, so I'm I sure thinking about you... saying there was no nudity. <laughs> there was no nudity. There was plenty of, there was plenty of everyone nudity. Was, yeah. Everyone was nude. You know what, Will? Um, <laughs> 2004 <laughs> is three years after Zoolander. <gasps> oh, there you go. That was the most important. 9-11 was an inside job. You heard it here. <laughs> so overall, I give Kim it... Chim Free digging a ditches... I out thought, of a car wash. I thought you gave it a 2004. So, Bartek, you've gathered some comments from the interwebs. Let's hear him, home shizzle nizzle. That's Who knows? <laughs> Will Smith might have written one. He has a YouTube account. That's actually true, Ryan. You, you, I didn't even tell you that I gathered anything, and you were right. <laughs> oh, shit. As, as Will and Smith you, and commented and on you right. videos. <laughs> Sorry, and you right izzle. Thanks. Right izzle. Sorry, I should have said T. Hanks. Tom Hanks. Thanks. Did you know Tom Hanks collects antique typewriters? I feel like I might have heard that, and but I I've not heard that before. Yeah, there's one, there's one time where I think it was Soul Pancake or some you know company sent him an antique typewriter, and he he wrote a letter back to them, which was basically like, "Thanks for the typewriter, but fuck you, I'm not coming on to in, for an interview." But then he did come on for an interview because he's Tom Hanks. It was just him being funny. Okay. <laughs> and another fun thing about Tom Hanks is this iconic image of Tom Hanks holding a baby and he's crying like the baby, but the revelation is it's actually Bill Murray. The, it's not the Tom per- Hanks. It's not Tom Hanks. It's okay. Bill Murray. Okay. I haven't yeah. seen that. So You'll when, see it. when Bill Murray cries, he turns into to Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. <laughs> yes, he does. You'll, you'll see it. Go on, Buzz. Yeah, it does for the internet reviews. Just some Tom Hanks facts for you there, people. He was in the movie Big. A movie about a woman who fucks a 13-year-old boy who's in Tom Hanks' body. It all connects. And my fun Tom What kind of furry is that? No, you want to know? <laughs> My fun Tom Hanks fact is that he was in the tuxedo, but it was actually Bill Murray, but it was actually not. It was actually Colin... <laughs> Mockery. Mockery. <laughs> yeah, God. Might be. <laughs> Might be, probably. It's still a big mystery to Definitely. us. Definitely. Uh, anyway, I've gathered five comments. One of them has some responses, but we'll get through it quickly. Go. The first comment is, this seriously was the most ghetto kids movie ever. XD. <laughs> well, XD... XD, XD, face. XD, XD, or really racist Chinese face, who knows? This oh. next comment is one that I kept thinking about throughout this entire episode because Ryan kept relating to it. <laughs> goody, goody. <laughs> Go on. So what are we, some kind of suicide fish? <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> it really killed me that I couldn't tell you about this earlier. 
but I'm glad that I hold, held it. Welcome to Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Earth, fish boy. <laughs> Some kind of suicide fish. Uh, oh, the, ne- the next dumb. comment is... Um, <clears throat> Y'all crazy. It's the wiki, wiki, wild, wild west. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just reading these Almost comments in my ear. a bottle of super <laughs> pump water all over everything. Hit us, Bartek, with your <clears throat> next comment from the interwebs by Will Smith Jr.'s son. I remember going, seeing this movie when I was five. Mm. I was with my dad, and when it started playing in the cinema, it was muted. My dad complained. They replayed it, but with sound. My dad lied to me and st- Sorry, my dad lied to me that someone was messing with the remote control for the sound, lol. I mean, he might not have been lying about that. He might have been a digital projection by then, and they might have had a remote system. Who knows? But hit us with your next well, comment. We have, we have no reason to doubt the comment. I mean, I, I, I'll take their word that their dad was a filthy fucking liar. They were like the Judas Iscariot of his own family. Traitor. Anyway, the next comment is the one that has response. Was that your Morgan Freeman impression just then? No, that was me saying anyway. Did you hear the Morgan Freemanism in that? That was, that was closer to most of the Morgan Freeman impressions we've done on Spit and Polish. <laughs> anyway. Have I done any? Yes. That intentionally? I don't, I don't know who we're impersonating it. <laughs> so far away from I mean, I said my voices. friend Morgan's name. Well, ex-friend, but... Hey, it's me, Morgan Freeman, and I'm here to say I played God twice. Ryan, stop doing Lenny from The Simpsons. Lenny? So... Simpsons? No, I'm Lenny from, from Laverne and Shirley, yeah. Anyway, the comment that has responses is a... Uh, a sort of poor internet communication. Uh, okay. Fred George, or whatever you want to call it. Oh, a conversational... Fred, you mean George. you mean Jorge? <laughs> Jorge, that was it. Um, <laughs> the the initial comment is uh, it's a it's a question, guys. So I'll answer, <laughs> we it. Have to answer it. Okay. <laughs> Fish is stonger. <laughs> I don't know what that means. What yes. does stonger mean? Yes. No. I think it's stronger, but without the first R. <laughs> <laughs> now Fish you have context, stronger? right? And you can answer it, right? Fish is stronger? Stronger? Stronger. Um, yeah. Good man. Well, Ryan, you'll be surprised that the first response is, Nope, this fish it not stronger. (laughs) What if he wasn't saying that? What if stronger is something else? (laughs) And the original commenter responds, the final response is, um, it's a question again. (laughs) He he doesn't get an answer. He's a real philosopher, this guy. Come on. The real Eddie Maguire, this guy. <laughs> you want to watch the Shark Tale? <laughs> and he never answered him. No, nope. so we'll never know. Nope. <laughs> well, answer the question, Will. Answer the question. But I already did watch the, it. the second answer. Is obviously a yes, but the fish is stronger. Is the fish which fish stronger than what? Let's just repeat the whole thing because we laughed a lot. First comment. Fish is stronger? Response. <laughs> nope, this fish, it not stronger. Final response. You want to watch the shark tale? No. So I not don't. I just, just covered it. Not weaker, Never just again. not stronger? I'd rather co- cover shark tale than the shark tale. I agree. So, Bartek... Although you, just... you did just say you did just cover it, so that kind of... Well, I covered him era. covering it. That's a fair point. Good save. I'm the Tracy Grimshaw of our show. I have one final comment before I get to the IMDb review. Great. Hit us. In the loin. Claw. OMG! I can't believe I found this! I remembered this movie and how great it was, but didn't know what's the name of it. And I was looking for Robert De Niro's movies and found this! Colon capital D. I'm so <laughs> happy right now. Smiley face. Filmography. And I'm like, what is all this crap? Where's the movie about the sharks? Come on. Godfather part two. No, that's not the Fuck book. Off. Where's my shark movie? <laughs> Fuck king of comedy. He's most underrated and best performance. Fuck that. I want the sharky Forget movie. Taxi driver, Was he... I need my sharks. You, you know what I bet he, this person did? They looked up the Sharknado movies. It was like, I'm not finding Robert De Niro in any of these. What's that it mustn't sh- be these. What's that shark story, that tale about the sharks? Shit. Shit. You know, 
we haven't done many, if any, shark movies on this podcast. Is this our first shark movie? You, you haven't done Deep Blue Sea? No. C- may I please remind you of... <laughs> you didn't do the you didn't flipper. do the Meg. We haven't done the Meg. Oh, it, hurt, is, uh, it hurts got, to say that. Hashtag Meg. broke new ground. We did a shark movie finally, so you can no longer ask us to do them. I've honestly not seen many shark films. You You're do missing the, out. Do the shallows. There's, there's Jaws. I saw Shark to Jaws. What the fuck is Jaws? Jaws two. Oh, like oh, sorry. I'll clarify. Jaws three: The Revenge with Michael Caine, and he did it because he wanted a a beach house. That's the real reason why he did it. Uh, hit us with your IMDb. <coughs> or a cough. Whichever one works. Both. Sorry. I don't, while while you're recovering... I don't think you actually finished, Bartek. Can we... <laughs> while you're you recovering... I haven't started the IMDb. While you're me. recovering from your cough, I'll share another Tom Hanks fact. There was one time Tom Hanks was following... Like, he was walking the street and a baby kicked off his little baby shoe or baby sock. And he grabbed it and he had to chase his family down to return this baby sock or shoe. Doesn't Tom Hanks spend a lot of time collecting lost property and trying to ensure it gets yeah, back? Yeah, his whole Twitter thing? is that. Oh, okay. His whole Twitter is him like, found a sock. Anyone missing a sock in Central Park? Yeah, I'm starting to wonder like, if I've heard these stories like Graham Norton or something. But Just Tom yeah. Hanks. Tom Hanks has a brother who yeah, looks Jim Hanks. exactly like him and he sounds exactly like he him does, except for he's bold. And he, and he does, does all the voices. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, he, he's his personal Brian George. He is his own personal Brian George. Yeah. Hit us with your kind of IMDb living in the shadow there. It's a review. Sad. The IMDb review is titled A Will Smith Show and about five uh, dots. It's a movie. A Will Smith Show dot 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 dot. It is from the 17th of September 2004 and it is a 6 out of 10 review. No! Ooh. 10 out of 10! And this one has... Uh, the two halves are separated by little subtitles. The oh, first subtitle sexy. is The Entree. <clears throat> oh, it's a meal. And just to, rem- <laughs> just to remind you, this was written on the 17th of September 2004. And that's related because the first sentence is... <clears throat> Saw this movie in Venice Film Festival on the 11th of September. So oh, si- my dad's birthday. At 9-11. <laughs> yeah, so s- six days before this review was posted. On a tender <laughs> night on the San Marco Square... The movie Evening started with Will Smith entering the red carpet interviewing Arena. He continuously gave interviews, ran to the crowd to draw attention, then went back to the interviews. Fun once, okay to do twice, but after the fifth time, you wish he'd trip over his own feet, praying he would behave differently. Should have stuck to free. (laughs) On the stage... He tried to force the crowd into applause for him up to four times, but indeed scored on his break beat box capabilities. Oh, the the Venetians were not impressed with Will Smith's beatboxing. <laughs> this is a new paragraph. Jada Pinkett was around too as frills. End of paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Angelina Jolie was, however, very attractive, comma, with kid. End of paragraph. <laughs> De Niro had the glimmer in his eyes, still working on getting honorary citizenship from Italy. Did you know Robert De Niro believes that um, his kid has autism because he got vaccinated? Just fun fact. I didn't know Robert De Niro was an anti-vaxxer. He, he actually funds, produces anti-vaxxer movies for film festivals, so yeah. Just want to point did, that out. I didn't know. At least he vaccinated his kid. <laughs> anyway, um, the next subtitle is The Film. Because that was oh, just the entree. I think that'd be The Meal. <laughs> the movie starts with Will Smith, and in brackets, Oscar. Thank you. Usually the other way around, but okay. <laughs> displaying his Fresh Prince acts all over again. <laughs> and continue to rely on those with Jack Black, Lenny, giving the true comic relief. Oscar is overactive and has a big mouth, overrates himself, and this continues straight up to the end of the movie. He gets into trouble... Yeah, he gets into trouble... Not trouble! Gets into deeper trouble... Oh, oh no! <laughs> finds collaborating help from Lenny, gets e- <laughs> gets even into deeper poo... 
And then oh, every he's in trouble <laughs> just a minute ago. <laughs> now it is. Now that trouble was turned into poo, and it's even deeper than he realised. Gets even into deeper poo, and then everything works out in one big grand finale. Oh, I threw in the word big there. One grand finale. Oh, you're misrepresenting him. Lenny, and in brackets Jack Black, so he did it correct this time, is very funny and should be the true star of the film. He steals the show with his brief appearances and the dumb mafia gang of Don Lino, Robert De Niro, has some true moments of comedy. All in all, a long time to watch Will Smith do his usual Fresh Prince tricks over and over again, reminding me more and more of his tricks seen from that show. Oh, he's not falling for those Fresh Prince of Bel-Air tricks. (laughs) I know him! He's a magician! I know his tricks of illusion! He's a charlatan! Charlatan! I've seen him use that smile in an episode of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air Season 4, Episode 9. Not a movie I would pay for, and thanked Venice for giving it to me for free. Thank you, Venetian viewer. I'm glad that you did not enjoy yourself. Uh, I sound like he enjoyed it, but didn't. Well, so, I mean, at least Jada again. Pinkett was around too as frills. But what about Angelina Jolie? She was hot, but kid she was w- there. <laughs> was, know, however, very attractive, with, comma, with kid. With kid. <laughs> so thank you very much. slow him down. He was still into that. Thank you very much, Bartek, for gathering those. Will, thank you for viewing the film, then coming here to talk about it. Dog, um, you're the man now, dog. Uh, I'm surprised I got away with that the whole episode, not saying that word. Um, Renee Zellweger, I'll see you in court. Um, <laughs> Peter Hitchener, call me. C- call me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, as always, have been fantastic, amazing, wonderful listening people. We will be back with our next episode about whatever movie we do. Um, Is it going to be another DreamWorks nominee? No. Okay. Um, you guys can find us on all, on the social medias, on the Facebook, on the Twitter. You can look us up, uh, rate us, and review us on whatever podcast platforming sites allow that. On the Apple Podcasts and all that, that's very helpful. Spreads us around. You could just spread us around, recommend us to all your friends, foes, and families, and please, pets. please chill for us. Yeah, please shill yourself for us. Like, just dance around on the street dressed up in a giant, like, sausage outfit that says spit and polish on it and throw streamers in the air and say, listen to this podcast. And and bring your girlfriend as frills. With kid, though, as well. (laughs) So, until next time, listening people, remember, yo, 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 what's up? My life got turned upside down because I'm a fish man. Till next time, people, remember to be kind to each other, dog. Classic 90. So this is the story (laughs) all about how this episode of the podcast ended. (laughs) 